We're now in module five. This is 5.1a, finding percent increase. Let's start with a real quick vocabulary review. Proportion, that's an equation that states that two ratios are equivalent, like one half is equal to five tenths. They're in proportion to each other. A ratio, that's a comparison of two quantities by division. If we have 11 to 20, we can write it with this colon as 11 to 20 and 11 twentieths. So it would be 11 divided by 20. Percent, that's a ratio that compares a part to the whole using 100. It means per 100. So 35% is equal to 35 hundredths. Percents can be used to describe how an amount changes. We have the percent change, and that's equal to the amount of change divided by the original amount. The change may be an increase or a decrease. Percent increase describes how much a quantity increases in comparison to the original amount. Last year, a gallon of milk cost $3. This year, it costs $3.50. What's the percent increase? The very first thing we do is find the amount that it changed by subtracting. We're going to find the difference. The amount of change is equal to the greater amount minus the lesser amount. We have 50 cents is equal to the $3.50, the greater amount, minus the $3 original amount, the lesser amount. We find the percent increase. We round to the nearest percent. The percent change is equal to the amount of change divided by the original amount. We substitute the values and divide. The amount of change was 50 cents, and the original amount was $3. So we're going to do 50 cents divided by $3. That means the 50 cents is going to be on the inside as we do long division, if we do it this way. And we've got two decimal spots in this $3. We need to move it over to here, which means we need to move over this decimal point to here. Then it's going to go straight up, isn't it? And as we do our long division, we get a 0.166, and then the 6 is going to repeat because we're going to keep getting 2,000 minus 1,800. We can just put a bar over it, and we write as a percent and round to the hundredths place because it's going to be two places as 17 hundredths. This 6 tells this 6 to round up to a 7, so we have 17%. It was a 17% increase. So I don't know if you remember from last year in sixth grade math, it was less than 8.2. And that's going to be linked in this description if you're a little rusty and you don't remember. But we write a percent as a decimal by removing the percent symbol and writing it over 100. Then we can write it in decimal form. So 25%, we take away the percent sign and percent means per 100. So we have 25 per 100. That's 25 hundredths which is 0 0.25. And we can do that for any percentage. 100% would be 100 over 100. That would be one whole. Sam's new job pays 100% more than his old job. His old job paid $600 per week. How much does he make at his new job per week? Well, 100% more means a 100% increase. The amount of change is equal to the original amount. It's equal to the original amount. The original amount was $600, and we're going to add another $600. It's equal. That means a 100% increase, he is making $1,200 per week. A 100% increase means the original amount doubles. So we could do $600 times 2. That would be $1,200. A percent increase is always a positive change because the lesser value is subtracted from the greater value. The original amount is positive, so the quotient is positive. If we had blue jeans priced as an increase from $40 to $50, that's the original amount, that's the new amount, what is the percent increase? 
we do the amount of change is equal to the greater amount minus the lesser amount. That means $10 is $50 minus $40. And the percent change is equal to the amount of change divided by the original amount. So we're going to have the amount of change, $10, divided by the original amount, $40. The percent change, that's going to be 25%, is equal to the amount of change, the $10, divided by the original amount, $40. We can write an equivalent fraction with 100 as a denominator. We think, well, 40 needs to be multiplied by 2.5 to be 100, so we multiply 10 by 2.5 and we get 25. That's 25 hundredths. That would be 25%. Or we could do 10 divided by 40. So because 10 is the numerator, that's going to go inside the long division bracket. So 40 fits into 10. We're going to have to go into the decimals here and do 40 fits into 100 two times. And that's 80. We subtract it, get 20, drop down this 0. And now we do 40 fits into 200 five times. We have 0.25. That's 25%. We can check our answers by multiplying the percentage increase by the original amount, which should equal the amount of change. So is an increase from $40 to $50 a 25% increase for our blue jeans? We multiply the percentage, 25% is 0 0.25, by the original amount, $40, and we get $10. So remember, if there's two hops in the problem, there's going to be two hops in the product. So yes, 25% is correct because the amount of change is $10. We need to be careful if we're using a calculator. We need to remember to enter parentheses. We would do parentheses, the greater amount minus the lesser amount, close parentheses, then divide by the original amount. So you'd hit the first parentheses key, 5, 0, minus 4, 0, close parentheses, the division key, and then 4, 0, because that's the original amount, 40, and then the equal key. We could also separate the operations with an equal sign and do this as two steps. We could do 50 minus 40 is equal, and then we would get our 10, and then do 10 divided by 40, and we would get our 0 0.25 for 25%. We finished 5.1a. We're going to move on to 5.1b, finding percent decrease. Remember, if you need a quick refresher on percentages to decimals, that video 8.2 from 6th grade is linked in the description. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and it's productive, and I hope you'll join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.